Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, we're going to react to live coverage of the 1989 San Francisco earthquake. Now, this was a major earthquake. I think there was something like almost 4,000 injuries and like 70 or 80 like fatalities. It was very, very serious. I think it might be like the, the, the most um, damaging earthquake in the in the west coast of the like last hundred odd years or something like that so when it was happening it must have just been surreal like to feel like the world shaken under your feet you know to see buildings like moving to see bridges collapsing it just must have been incredible and the live news crews they must have been obviously like they've got a, a story that they're trying to cover but at the same time they're in danger too Okay. Look well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are uh, going through an earthquake at this very moment, an earthquake that has been uh, rattling this studio and shaking the lights above us for almost a full minute now. And I can tell you in almost 21 years here and a couple of quakes, I've never been in one that's uh, shaken us like it's this. A, it's a frightening feeling. And up above us, the lights are starting to shake a bit. We don't know what's happening outside the studio at this time, but we have some crews heading outside to see if there's any damage in the Sacramento area. And of course, trying to find out where the earthquake is sent I can still feel it rocking, Dick. Yeah, this, this has been uh, going on at least about 45 seconds to a minute. Yeah. I, I... Wow, look at that. The camera's all shaky. Oh my God, look at the cars. Dang. Oh man. Has that bridge snapped in the middle? Oh! They must have not seen the uh, the crack. No, it's it's not a crack. It, oh my god! Wow! Honestly, being in a helicopter is probably the safest place during an earthquake. You know, if you're on the ground near any kind of object. You're 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 in danger, aren't you? Everyone at Candlestick Park was in a state of shock, including the A's players who left for the East Bay, still dressed to play. The trip out of the stick a nightmare. Traffic horrendous, and bottle throwing became the thing to do in the Hunters Point area. This little girl, one of many people, injured. But that was nothing compared to the sight of Sixth and Townsend where the top floor of a brick building crashed to the ground, oh killing at least God. five people sitting in their cars below. All sorts of debris could be seen in downtown San Francisco, but according to Mayor Art Agnos, it wasn't as bad as it looked. The city is in good shape. We have survived this. Uh, all of the important personnel, major personnel, police chief, director of public health, um, are on duty, and uh, we're in charge, and uh, we're handling this thing. I'm asking people in the city to be calm, and to take care of one another as well. With I mean, yeah, he's saying what he has to say, you know, try and keep everybody calm. You don't want the mayor to be like, oh my God, it's like, oh, everything is falling. <laughs> you want someone that's cool, calm and collected. Without any power, San Franciscans tried to reassure one another. Impromptu block parties organized all over the city. This is a native speaking. Yeah, I think so. I think if anything, we have some tremors coming, but I think the worst is over with and it's the worst I've ever felt. It's an eerie feeling in downtown San Francisco right now. All the power is still out. People have forgotten all about the World Series, and all they're hoping to do is get through the night and then deal with the earthquake's destruction tomorrow. In San Francisco, Dan Elliott, News 10 Nightside. Man, I, I love the, the old school footage here. You know, you, it's this really is the day after the in Santa Cruz, just 10 miles from the quake's epicenter. The Pacific Garden Mall claims the brunt of the devastation here, where at least four people were killed when ceilings became floors. Oh Santa God. Cruz residents had a very shaky night last night, being hit by aftershock after aftershock. Numerous aftershocks, and they were definitely perceptible. They were the kind of earthquakes that uh, we normally feel as an earthquake. Many, but not all, of the roads into Santa Cruz were closed today. The county has asked the governor to declare it a disaster area, with damage estimated at $350 million. Whew. And $350 million in 1989, we're probably talking well over a billion today. Well, well over. 
Well over, yeah, probably like multiple billion. And as the cleanup begins, there are long lines at hardware and grocery stores. The search efforts by hand cannot continue due to the dangerous condition of the building. As the town rumbled with aftershocks late last night, the desperate search for a woman thought trapped in a coffee roasting company was called off, much to the frustration of her friends. I'm furious because the building isn't going to get any less unsafe. I mean, if it's unsafe now, it's going to stay unsafe. We go in now, get her out. She may be dead by morning. And this morning, a search dog... Dang, I completely understand his frustrations there, to be fair. ...was sent in to sniff for the body, only to lead searchers to a huge pile of rubble and no sign of life. It was about chest high to me and about 15 feet wide and just humped with old bricks. And the water, the water sprinkling system broke in there. Still, Santa Cruz residents pray for the best today as the death toll rises. In Santa Cruz, Stacy Walters, News 10. <laughs> Wait and see. Wow, did you see that pile of, uh, of like wood, like multiple houses worth of wood? Oh man. I wonder how many homes, oh my God. I wonder how many homes were destroyed. Thousands probably. President Bush could barely believe what he was seeing. First stop, Oakland and the collapsed section of Interstate 880, where commuters were crushed by tons of concrete. The president initially oh. whispered a single word, Jesus, as he saw the devastation firsthand. These big cross sections, no, or they just they crumbled. They just went straight down. A lot of the people who were killed were killed by these giant cross beams that yeah. hit, their, hit their cars. By his presence, the president hoped to offer an emotional anchor, and to one victim in particular, six-year-old Julio Beruman, he is now in stable condition. I guess the most emotional thing was talking to the father, well first to the doctors and then to the father of the little boy who, whose life was saved uh, by on the freeway, crushed freeway, when the doctors went in and had to amputate his leg to get him out of the hospital Dang. and talk to the dad and talk to the doctor and so there's this human oh, dimension is brought home much more clearly by by coming here. From overhead, the president oh. saw the ruins of San Francisco's Marina oh District God. and promised federal aid minus the red tape. We are all uh, grateful for his response. Uh, he uh, is doing exactly what we want. He's listening carefully and giving us the kind of responses that we want to hear, which is that they're going to do what's necessary to help the people here. On to another city in suffering, Santa Cruz, near the epicenter of the big quake. Again, the president promised federal aid, but he wouldn't say how much. What it'll cost, I don't know. But the federal government will work with these other entities, state the government entities, private entities. I mean, that's fair. Like, he's only just arrived. He doesn't know how much it's going to cost. Like, unless you want him to just, like, you know, just pick a number out of the air. He knows it's going to be expensive, but he probably hasn't even tallied up all of the damage. You see that the... Uh, Suffering is alleviated. North Avenue home for 31 years. But the car and the friend that neighborhood kids watched for won't be pulling into her driveway anymore. Oh, she was gosh. among those killed when the earthquake brought down the Nimitz Freeway. She had been in Oakland for a doctor's appointment and a visit with relatives and headed home late Tuesday afternoon. She wanted to go home because she doesn't like leaving her house at night. So she wanted to go home in enough time that way she'd be home by dark. So that's why she left my grandparents' house about 10 minutes to 5 on the 17th. Mary's death has brought the earthquake home to her Del Paso Heights neighbors. With all the devastation, we still, kind of, we still couldn't believe that it was her that um, it happened to. Today, Mary's nephew was at her home finalizing funeral plans. Man. The neatly kept living room is filled with photographs, especially of children. Mary's husband died a decade ago and they didn't have children of their own. But neighbors say she was cousin Mary to dozens of North Avenue youngsters. It was a devastation to this neighborhood and um, the children, we think about the children, you know, they're saying no more you know, Cousin Mary, 
you know, because she would give them ice cream and plenty candy and loving and she would bake cakes for them. It's just crazy that she died just like that, you know, in an earthquake. You, I just, I can't, I can't say I've known anybody, anybody to have died in an earthquake. But if you're from that region, because I think San Francisco is on the Ring of Fire, the Pacific Rim, something like that. It's quite common, earthquakes there. Woman. Mary Williams was a devout Jehovah's Witness. Her faith was a big part of her life. And faith that she's now in a better place is today comforting those dealing with her death. In Sacramento, Gail Westrup, News 10. Man, just seeing that bridge, you know, that was a that was a freeway. That was that's thousands and thousands of tons of steel and concrete just cracked like like a peanut, you know. Earthquakes just immensely powerful, immensely powerful things. I feel so bad for the, the victims, you know. They were just going about their lives. Maybe they were, you know, on their way home like cousin Mary was. Or, you know, maybe they were just in their home. Maybe they were at the baseball game watching the Oakland A's. And then just to have your life, you know, taken. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. And, you know, there's not much you can really do. I mean, you can kind of earthquake proof certain buildings like skyscrapers you know if you if you build shock waves into the foundations you can kind of like limit how much uh, destruction is caused in the structure but ultimately you know if an earthquake is powerful enough it's just going to wreak havoc thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next